It's the Mustang Insider Show. All right, thanks for joining us. Another edition of the Mustang Insider. Just a couple days away from the college baseball season. Cal Poly opens the 2023 campaign at home, welcoming in Missouri State. Larry Lee is the head coach of the Mustangs, embarking on his 21st season at the helm of the program, and he joins us now. Coach, thanks for taking some time. I know things are busy here right on the cusp of a new season, and uh, there's a lot of new faces with your ball club this year. Obviously, uh, Brooks Lee, Drew Thorpe, a couple of high-round draft picks uh, from last season's team. Jason Franks, another guy uh, that went on to play in the Atlanta Braves organization from last year's team. And uh, some other guys either graduated or went elsewhere. What are your thoughts on this group just a, a couple days away from starting a new 56-game schedule? We'll see. You know, it's uh, like you said, a lot of new faces. Um, we'll only return three starters uh, from a position player standpoint, uh, two catchers, Vegas and in Stafford and our first baseman, Joe York, uh, return Weston. So he's our only weekend starter returning. So um, a lot of new faces and you don't quite know what you're going to get till the lights go on for real. Some guys are improving, developing. Uh, we'll, we'll come up with a set lineup at the early part of our season with a couple of interchangeable parts. And they just got to see how they respond during a, a game situation. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to it. another another year. And I think our, our guys, you know, they're looking forward to playing some outside competition instead of playing, you know, inner squads uh, over the last three weekends. Now, now, it was so much welcome news in the offseason when you got Travis Weston to come back for his last year of eligibility. He's been a durable innings eater for you guys. Uh, he's got a poise about him where – uh, you kind of want that to go throughout your weekend rotation. I mean, not only is he a veteran who's got a, a ton of innings and starts under his belt now, but he's had success. I mean, he's pitched complete games for you guys. He's he's won big games against um, some pretty good teams here in the Big West Conference. Uh, it sounds like you're going to have him uh, in his normal Saturday slot, um, as you did last season behind Drew Thorpe. But what does the rest of that weekend rotation look like? Because I know the last couple years – that Sunday spot has kind of been a revolving door, whether or not that that's been by design or by injury. What is the desired Cal Poly weekend rotation like as we head into the first series of the year? Well, you know, up until this last weekend, we were trying to figure out if it was going to be Bryce Worker or Travis Weston on Friday and who would throw Saturday. And just finally decided that uh, Bryce would, would, you know, throw Friday. Had a great summer. It was the pitcher of the year in the the Cape uh, Cod League this past summer. Uh, kind of an imposing figure, six eight, three pitch mix. Uh, Travis, uh, you know, he's he's used to pitching in in big ball games, and and uh, he'll he'll throw Saturday. And you're right, we we have been very good on Sundays and midweek games. So uh, Ryan Baum, uh, transfer from San Mateo, just decided that he would be initially our, our our best chance of winning ball games on Sunday and then for a midweek uh, Charlie Royal who's kind of climbed the ladder uh, he'll throw in the midweeks to to begin with so it's um you know hopefully those hopefully those you know Saturday Sunday spots stay the same you would like the Sunday start to to with the bomb to be effective and and keep that consistent but uh, you never know. And, uh, uh, you know, you you work in practice and uh, you try to figure out what your deficiencies are and get everybody up to speed on things. But when you start playing real games, then you can really focus uh, during during the week with practices on what you really need to work on, whether it be a pitching side of it, defensive side of it, or offensive side of it. So. That's uh, that's where the staff is right now. Um, have some you know guys out of the bullpen. Derek True, uh, Kyle Scott's coming back from uh, arm surgery. He's probably going to be limited to one outing this this initial weekend. Um, and then we got some bits and pieces with other guys uh, throughout. And have a uh, you know a couple thoughts in case Sunday doesn't go well or Tuesday doesn't go well. But uh, you know that's need to get back, get on the field and uh, get some of those questions answered. 
Uh, it sounds like you have uh, some capable arms, whether or not they're returners or guys that will be pitching in their first games in the Cal Poly uniform. I think back to a year like 2019, and, and while you, you didn't perform the way you wanted to during the pre-Big West schedule that year, it, it did come down to game 56 at UC Santa Barbara. I mean, a win and, and you get to a regional. And, and what I remember the most about that team, while it's starting pitching wasn't necessarily its strength, you had two guys that were so durable and so consistent and Taylor Dollard and Michael Clark that could come out of the bullpen and kind of bridge the gap from, from the fifth to the ninth inning at times, and sometimes even twice in a weekend. How does this pitching depth from a rotation standpoint and from the bullpen kind of compare to what we've seen in recent memory? Because I know you, you probably used Jason Franks a little more than you would have liked to, last season because of whatever it might be, the, the injury to Kyle Scott last year, Dylan Villalobos kind of being thrust into that Sunday opener spot. Where, where does the pitching depth on this team kind of rank compared to what we've seen the last few years? Um, well, like in, in 2019, yeah, we, we basically had one, one starter, Bobby I and two guys out of the pen. So you just had a, we weren't, weren't very good on midweeks and, everything for that season we were just trying to win conference series on the weekend and but i don't know if we have a you know a dollar or clark uh but i think you know with uh, quantity you're hoping to find some some depth in that um there's two pitchers that are not available right now and may or may not be available the rest of the season that you know we were pretty high on uh, Jacob Wright had come back from a from a elbow surgery and uh, was lightning and he probably would have been one of our weekend starters um, but then he felt the same pain that he felt back in high school and so we're kind of a wait and see with him and then uh, our our best left-handed bullpen arm uh, 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 Betosh, he had some soreness when he came back in January. And so best case scenario, we're looking at him coming back maybe right at the beginning of, of the conference. So, you know, just when you think you have depth, things happen and, and now you don't have depth. And now, you know, in 27 innings on a weekend, you probably just took away, you know, close to eight or nine innings. Uh, and so now you have, you have to find somebody to step up. So we have some some uh maturity some age uh it's just to see wait and see to see how they perform in a game you have guys like Caden Sheedy and Stephen Brooks uh that uh have college experience and you know just kind of waiting for them to take the next step up well it, it's a challenging non-conference schedule so obviously it's tough for guys to kind of try and find their identity and, and what their role is going to be on this team whether it be you know, a late inning high leverage reliever, maybe, you know, somebody there to kind of bridge the gap in the middle innings if one of your starters has a shorter outing. I mean, look, Missouri State NCAA tournament team last season. I know we saw them in, in Arlington uh, late February when that series kind of got switched around. UNLV is the Mountain West favorite. Obviously, Oregon State, a powerhouse. UConn, Cal, uh, two terrific Power Five programs uh, that you'll see up in Berkeley the second weekend of the year. So you, you don't have uh, much time to kind of really tinker with things if you want to win ball games here out of the gate. But obviously, last season's team, you know, thirty-seven win team. I remember us talking before that last game in Hawaii uh, to wrap the regular season. You felt like you had a regional caliber ball club. Now the RPI didn't reflect that, and and obviously. Uh, the committee doesn't give us enough uh, enough love out west. Uh, we've talked about that throughout the years, and and you know from an eye test standpoint, from that Santa Barbara series on last season, you guys really looked like you could have made some noise in a regional. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, and I know you felt like you've taken a step back in some areas because of the losses from last year's team. But this is a good enough non conference schedule to where if you put some wins together and you do come up short again in the big West, maybe the RPI is going to be there for you guys. I know you're taking it one weekend at a time, but is there an extra emphasis to kind of get more wins out of the gate this season? Because it, it, it's obviously been a common theme to where you guys have, you know, kind of played 500 ball non-conference and then you light the world on fire in the big West. And uh, unfortunately the big West, the last few years, and maybe it's because of the additions to the conference, it, it's been a one bid league. What are your thoughts on, on how all of that's looking? 
Yeah, it's always important to get off to a, a good start. And if you don't, you kind of, you know, dig yourself a hole that sometimes, you know, your conference doesn't allow you to dig out of. So, you know, I would think that we'd, you would like to play at least like 600 ball and, and be, be a few games over 500, which is difficult out here uh, and difficult with our, our schedule that we have, but that's what you want to do. You, you can't afford to get off to, a, you know, a, a slow start the first three weeks and because then you're always playing catch up and uh, you know, last year's team. Yeah. You, you, we, we could have won a couple of games in a regional. We could have won a regional. I mean, you have a, you had a Friday night guy that was uh, could beat anybody in the country, and uh, you have had enough uh, offensive um, that that you could you know do some damage. So, but that's just the way we are. I know when we added two more teams into the Big West, that kind of uh, really uh, hurt the conference. And um, whereas in the past with a nine conference or nineteen conference, you probably had you know maybe a couple of two possibly three teams kind of weighing you down now uh, on any given year, you probably have four or five teams that are, are, are weighing you down. So it's difficult because in some of the power five conferences, you know, they have good non-conference records. And then when we, they play each other, their RPI just gets better and better. And so it's not the case in, in our conference. I mean, you see, um, you know, teams that win 40 plus games and probably should be, probably should have an RPI of about, you know, 10, 12, and their RPI is in the 40s, you know, high 40s. So just the way, what, way it is right now, it has become a one-bed league. And But we need our our uh, perennial teams. You know, Long Beach and Fullerton had had uh, subpar years last year. They need, to, they need to, you know, have really good years. And we just, as a conference, need to pick up uh, our winning percentage in non-conference games and then – that will help us uh, make it a little bit easier to you know, get a higher RPI. I think that gives some clarity to college baseball fans, Cal Poly baseball fans. Uh, when you're seeing the Long Beach States and the Fullertons and the Irvines of the world, you know, taking on UCLA or Mississippi State, you want to root for those teams before you get to conference play. I mean, uh, losing those games doesn't help Cal Poly if, if you get into a predicament where you're not the automatic qualifier. I mean, obviously – Looking at the RPI, I think a lot of us, the final few weekends of last year, we we're looking at that RPI and you go beat Pepperdine in a midweek and it jumps 17 spots, but then you sweep Fullerton and you go back a spot. I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And and hopefully the, the committee uses other tools. We were hoping the eye test would, would maybe be uh, something to give us a, a miraculous consideration late last season, but that didn't happen. I, I want to talk about the offense coach and and you you bring back some notables, some some guys that have accomplished um, some great things with your program, in particular last year. Joe York took a huge leap from his first year with Cal Poly to his second season. He had one of the highest batting averages in the Big West. Uh, Stafford, Viegas, a couple guys you bring back that were all conference hitters last year. Who are some newcomers that you expect to kind of uh, replace some of the power and, and some of the productivity that you lost off of last year's team? Well, productivity, um, we have a really good defensive shortstop who has – turn the corner offensively and Aaron Casillas, he's a transfer from Cal state Bakersfield. So, um, you know, between our catchers and, and uh, our shortstop, uh, very strong up the middle, uh, Jacob Steele's, uh, Rigetti high school transfer from, uh, Hancock college in Santa Maria. Uh, dad played in the big leagues, uh, back in the day. Uh, you know, very good talent, add some speed to the lineup, add a little bit of, of power, um freshman at third base tate shamal he's a kid from out of hawaii um just kind of carries himself like a upperclassman a uh, very hard worker uh kind of has that it factor i think he's going to do really well um second baseman a couple guys shortstop from uh cuesta um ryan fenn uh, right-handed hitter and then a switch hitter out of uh delta college up in northern california uh, Kemet Brown. So those guys are be playing there. Probably again, because I think we're a little bit thin with the offense in the outfield. So probably whoever doesn't catch between uh, Stafford and Vegas will play left field again. And then right field right now, there's probably looking at about three different guys. Uh, 
uh, freshman, uh, Wyatt King, uh, a redshirt freshman from last year, had uh, labrum surgery, hip surgery, uh, Tanner Sagupsi, and then a transfer from Cal, uh, Trevor Tishankel. So we'll see how how things get off for for those guys and and uh, uh, see how it goes. Another bat freshman, uh, Evan Cloyd out of uh, Bakersfield Christian. And then uh, returner, um, Matthias Haas, you know, those two guys will probably be kind of a right-handed side for a, a DH. So, uh, yeah, just you, you're just curious to see how everybody responds. And, uh, you know, last year is last year. This it has nothing to do with this year. And um, you're hoping, though, also that your returners, the, the guys that are on the field, the Stafford and Vegas and, and York, you hope that they get off to a good start offensively and it takes kind of the pressure off the, the new guys. Now they can just kind of stay within themselves and uh, not think that they have to do anything special. Yeah, to that point of, of last year's roster and, and their capabilities being much different than this 2023 team, is there a different type of identity? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily categorize last teams as a uh, you know, a home run thumping lineup, but you did have that home run threat in Brooks Lee. John Lagatuda brought you a little bit of power in the middle of your batting order uh, from the left-hand side. You guys were among the nation's uh, lowest in stolen bases. D does that change at all with, with this roster this season? If you maybe take a step back in the power department, but maybe try to make some things happen on the bases going first to third a little bit more? Yeah, there's a little bit more speed uh in in a few of the areas um but you have you healthy some of those guys are are dealing some leg issues right now so yeah that's what you would like uh so our our guys up the middle outside of casillas they can run uh run a little bit uh you know you need to be able to make things happen instead of just sitting back and thinking you're going to get you know run on first three straight hits to score a run you would like to uh be able to take advantage or at least go first to third on, on a, a ball to the outfield. Need to be able to hit and run well. And we really we need to do everything, you know, to a certain standard. Uh, and last year with Brooks in the lineup, it, it was, you know, the bullseye was on his back. Everybody else was, you know, like, like I said, is just, they, they feel comfortable and, um, Bricks made everybody else around him better because of how they pitched him. And they would get, you know, a, a pitcher would get Bricks out and then kind of take a sigh of relief. And then York follows and, and, uh, and is, is, you know, had a great year. Joe was probably at, at some point, probably for about a two month period, probably one of the best hitters in the country. And uh, so you would like to have that back for, for next year or for this year. Yeah, it's it's in the York bloodlines, man. I mean, his 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 yeah. younger younger brother is in the Red Sox organization. Mom was a an All American softball player. He's got another brother that's I think playing at Grand Canyon now. So, uh, you you did good on on bringing him in from the portal along with Travis Weston, those those Boise State guys. Um, after their program went away uh, in 2020, Larry Lee, our guest, Cal Poly baseball head coach. Year 21 on the horizon. It starts this weekend against Missouri State. And, Coach, you've got some uh, new sidekicks, if you will, uh, with you. New pitching coach, uh, new assistant coach, associate head coach. Uh, tell me a little bit about these new guys that you brought in and, and why you felt like they fit into the Cal Poly baseball program. Well, it was a, a, a difficult offseason where, you know, uh, you lose everybody and you, you lose your, your three assistant coaches. But – Feel good with uh, the staff we have. So Seth Moyer, he's a pitching coach. He was five and a half years at UCLA under John Savage and then four years in the Minnesota Twins organization. Um, was a scout, but also was like a, a special assistant with pitching wise. He, he broke down probably one year, like 350 uh, major league arms for possible um, uh, trades things like that or free agency. And then he spent the last two years as the pitching coach at San Jose state, uh, Matt Fontino, uh, been at a number of different places. Uh, the last three St. Mary's Santa Barbara, then one year at USC. Uh, and you know, he's our, our lead recruiting coordinator, but 
helps out in the hitting and, and uh, coaches the outfielders, very detailed discipline. Uh, and, um, you know, a, a good fit for this program. And then uh, Logan Denholm, he's our volunteer assistant. He was a catcher at UC Davis. So he works with our catchers and our hitters and another real hardworking uh, kid, very young, uh, and was at San Jose State last year as the, the volunteer assistant. So, yeah, brand new. Not only do you, you know, because of the lack of returners, you know, all fall you were trying to teach uh the new new coming uh players everything about the program and how to do things but it was the same thing of, of teaching the um assistant coaches how how practices were run what the what the terminology was what what uh how i thought and what i expected and we're at a pretty good point at this time but you know now we start the games and now we'll have to, to you know continue to clean that up as the, the season progresses. Yeah. You probably got to a point for you guys a couple of weeks ago where you're, you're tired of doing inner squads. I mean, you're probably ready to to go get after it and kind of evaluate um, how things will go against uh, another program. Well, we needed it though. I mean, we, we need as much practice time as possible and in, in the inner squads and, uh, but it came to a point where, you know, our, I think our pitchers were tired of seeing the same hitters over and over and, I don't know if it's vice versa, but uh, sometimes you it's hard to get a, a read on, you know, our, our our pitchers really struggling that much, or is it just because our, our hitters see them, you know, over and over and over? Larry Lee, our guest and coach, you probably have a lot of wheels churning up there. I mean, you, you start of a new season, a lot of newcomers, new coaching staff. Uh, you're you're going to be managing Team USA this summer. Congratulations on that honor. And then, obviously, Brooks Lee is going to very soon start his first professional campaign. How, how are you managing all of that mentally right now as you get ready for the college baseball season? Well, Brooks, I mean, he's been here since the off season, and uh, he works out pretty much every day here, whether it's hitting or ground balls or, or lifting. And so... Yeah, just trying to spend as much time with him as possible before he leaves. He he uh he takes off this Friday for uh big league camp and yeah, excited for him. I mean he's he's uh you know, every time I see him when he comes back from a, a summer, he's he's better. But he's in my eyes, I mean, he's way better. He's he's uh from the fielding, throwing, certain things that, you know, a year ago uh, he wasn't able to do and now he does it like like uh at a real high level. And, uh, you know, he's a offensively better hitter. His right-handed swing look, looks great. And um, so it's it's exciting. And, you know, th they have very high expectations uh, for him. I think he's in a good organization with the Twins. And then the USA deal will start – really hasn't kicked off that much right now. We'll start having – weekly phone calls to discuss you know, the players around the country and see how they're doing. And we'll, we'll have a preliminary list. And then uh, as the season progresses, we'll narrow it down. And then they're not quite sure how the summer is going to go. When I, when, when I was an assistant coach in 2017, we had five game series against uh, Chinese Taipei, Cuba and Japan. So the only, the only series right now that's solidified is Japan uh cuba hasn't come back since uh COVID hit and then they're not sure about chinese taipei so it's uh it'll be like a, a, a it'll be good it'll be a uh, fun good experience and you know it'd be nice to be around the, the better college players in the country and then some of the guys i know uh, who will help me from the coaching standpoint so looking forward to it so yeah there's a, there's a lot uh on my plate, but it's, it's, it's dual. Coach, last thing for you, as you get ready for Missouri state and it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, with, with starting the college baseball season here in, in mid February, you're going to get some chilly nights here out of the gate. Uh, what's this team's biggest strength and its bi biggest weakness right now um, going into the first series of 2023? Not really sure. I mean, you would hope that your strengths are pitching and defense because your offense is going to be up and down. It's, 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 
it's more difficult to be consistent from an offensive standpoint. Um, I mean, after finishing our, our, our last weekend of inter squads, we're starting to really swing the bat very well. Uh, but I, I wouldn't want to say we're, we're, you know, stronger in one area than the other. So I just don't know. Um, I think in the net, in the first two to three weeks, you'll find out really where you are and you're hoping though, that you have at least, you know, the other facet of the game, picking up the other one. So if we're not pitching that well, then we need to score enough runs to come out with a win and vice versa. If we're not scoring enough, then our, our pitching needs to do a good, good job. So we have the opportunity to win ball games late. So uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the, the answer would be for that, but I, I know that we've, swung the bat extremely well as of late is that going to carry over to you know the regular season and uh you, you're never sure so that's that's what's exciting you're always cautious cautiously optimistic about the season but you have absolutely no idea how 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 the first week is going to turn out and you have no idea how the season's going to turn out well missouri state on the docket first february 17th that's this friday night Baggett Stadium. Yep, the new season begins 6 p.m. Uh, hopefully get a lot of fans out to the ballpark. Uh, dress warm. It's 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 always a good time for baseball. Coach, thanks for taking some time here. Good luck this weekend and uh, look forward to following the new uh, journey coming up. Sounds good. Thanks, Chris. All right. Always great to hear from Larry Lee, the Mustang skipper. Hard to believe he's embarking on his 21st season at the helm of Cal Poly Baseball. Well, the Mustangs will get it started. This weekend, Missouri State, the Bears come to town from the Missouri Valley Conference, and then it's uh, up to Berkeley for a set of games against Cal and UConn, and then back here first weekend of March, a Thursday through Sunday series against Oregon State. We're going to know a lot about this Cal Poly team out of the gate because they are playing some really, really good competition early. As always, we'd like to thank our partners for making this content possible. Dignity Health, offering all-star treatment you can trust. Learn more about their health care services, dignityhealth.org slash Central Coast. And, of course, grocery outlet, bargain market on Madonna Road here in San Luis Obispo. Check out the Mustang Tailgater Recipe Books uh, on the GoPoly website, gopoly.com forward slash publications. You can download the Mustang Tailgater booklet today and feast on these yummy tailgating favorites stuff from sizzling fajitas hearty beef sliders bite-sized mini taco cups i gotta run because i need to get to grocery outlet join us next time on the mustang insider this has been the mustang insider show the preceding has been a learfield's presentation on the cow poly sports network